We're starting our journey from the city of Calgary, about 350 miles north of Great Falls, Montana. Our first leg of our flight will take us to Vancouver, British Columbia, and then the next morning we'll fly to Mexico City, and then on to Merida, Yucatan. <laughs> In these videos, you can accompany us as we work towards moving our life from Canada to Mexico. You will meet locals and experts who will share their knowledge and other expats who have gone before who will share their experiences to make your transition easier. Come on, let's go. The flight from Calgary to Vancouver is about one hour, 15 minutes. And we flew out on a Sunday morning and our flight from Vancouver to Mexico City didn't leave until first thing on Monday, which will leave us a little bit of time to explore the city of Vancouver Sunday afternoon. We're here at the Calgary Airport, just getting ready for a uh, flight to Vancouver. It's just been delayed just a half an hour, 35 minutes. Uh, so we'll uh, arrive in Vancouver today, and then tomorrow is the other flight to Ciudad de Mexico and uh, Merida, Yucatan. And uh, this is our, our flight to uh, confirm and uh, finish our uh, Mexican residency process. Alright, so I'm glad you guys came along. It's going to be a fun video. Flight attempts prepare for departure. We are starting our journey from the city of Calgary in the province of Alberta, Western Canada. And this is about 350 miles north of Great Falls, Montana. The first leg of our journey takes us to Vancouver, British Columbia. And from there, we will fly to Mexico City and then on to Merida, Yucatan. The flight from Calgary to Vancouver is a short one hour, 15 minute flight. We flew it on Sunday morning, but our flight to Mexico isn't leaving until very early Monday. This will leave us Sunday afternoon to do a little exploring of Vancouver. After arriving in Vancouver and finding the shuttle, we checked into our hotel in the city of Richmond near the airport. We took the SkyTrain to downtown Vancouver. The SkyTrain is an elevated train outside of the island of Vancouver, but turns into a subway after crossing to the island. The SkyTrain station was right behind our hotel. After a 20 minute train ride and a short bus ride, we arrived at Granville Island. Granville Island is a pretty fun and happening place on a Sunday afternoon with lots of shops, restaurants, and an active market, all on a tiny little island in False Creek. We even stumbled on a street performer. Not yet! Oh god, this guy kind of bloody not. Wait for it! Wait, not yet! Wait for it! Wait for it! Wait, 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 After a nice lunch overlooking the water and exploring the markets, we decided to move on and see what else we could see in the short time that we had. We hopped onto the bus back to the SkyTrain station for a ride down to the waterfront. We were impressed about how green and lush Vancouver is for such a large metropolitan area. It really is quite beautiful. SkyTrains in Vancouver are pretty elaborate and have routes taking you all over the metro area. Various routes connect from Vancouver to Richmond, Burnaby, Surrey, Coquitlam, North Vancouver, and even right to the Vancouver Airport on Sea Island. This, along with connections to buses and sea buses, make public transportation quite convenient. Arriving at the end of the SkyTrain route, we ascended to the surface and walked in the light rain the two or three blocks for a view of Vancouver Harbour and the cruise ship terminal attached to the Vancouver Convention Center. So we walk down to the harbor, and uh, here's the Vancouver Convention Center, and right attached to it is a Celebrity Cruise Ship. And usually it's 4.30 in the afternoon, and they usually leave right about now. Looking, I don't actually see any lines attaching that ship, so I kind of wonder if they're getting ready to just take off. Here it goes, it's leaving. Well, the cruise ship is leaving, but we just got a text that our uh, room is ready. So we're gonna go uh, We're gonna go hop the train and go back to Richmond and check into our room. And tomorrow, Mexico. 
So we're here at the Vancouver airport. We uh, arrived three hours before our flight because we understand there have been uh, quite a few delays. And we had some trouble getting our boarding passes online uh, via the Aeromexico app. Um, but while we were standing in line this morning, uh, I was able to get it by skipping the app and just doing it on the web. And uh, skipped almost all of the line, checked our bags, went through the security. The whole thing took just about 30 minutes. Uh, so now we're waiting for Starbucks to open. It's 6 a.m. and Starbucks opened. This is way better than the coffee from our hotel room at 3.30 a.m. I have to tell you that we were very impressed by Aeromexico. The planes are beautiful and the service was amazing. They even offered me beer for breakfast with a laughing, Hey, you're in Mexico now. I declined. The flight from Vancouver to Mexico City took 5 hours and 45 minutes. And once we crossed into Mexican airspace, the internet opened up for messaging apps and email, and the internet was free. The food was great, and was overall a very, very pleasant flight. First glimpses of Mexico City. This city is stunningly large. Mexico City boasts a population of more than 22 million people, making it the eighth largest city in the world, larger even than New York City. Although we would have loved to have shown you Mexican customs, we weren't able to take photographs or video going through customs in Mexico City as there were no photography signs everywhere and we didn't want to start the process by getting in trouble. Upon arrival, we had to walk down quite a long series of corridors before we arrived at the customs hall, as you would expect in an airport of this size. Mexico City is the largest city in the Americas or the second largest in the Americas, I think second only to San Paulo, Brazil. As we descended into the large customs hall, we noted two lines. Uh, one was for tourists and the other was for Mexicanos. And we were advised by our lawyer and the consulate in Calgary to go to the Mexicans line, which happily was a much shorter line. It was interesting as we worked our way through the line with a whole bunch of Mexicans. I think we must have stood out a little bit, but nobody questioned us being there. Now, as we made our way up to the counter, the customs agent that we dealt with was very young and I think a little bit less experienced. She did scan our passports and we could see that our photos popped up on the screen. The photos that were taken at the consulate in Calgary, they matched the photos that were inserted into, like on visas, into our Canadian passports. These really cool embossed photos and uh, visas. Uh, but she did need to call a more senior agent to help her through the process what to do with us. Uh, at that time, they were still filling out FNMs. So it's a document that documents your arrival in the country and the reason for um, your arrival. And we had to have that checked off specific place. I'm trying to remember the words that uh, the check mark had to have on it, but they're not doing that anymore. So anymore, they're going to stamp your passport uh, and they're going to write information and no FNM required. There were a few questions there. It was really quite simple, 10 or 15 minutes and then we were on our way. So being cleared into the country, we just proceeded on to the luggage claim area and we didn't have anything to claim. The checked baggage that we had was checked all the way to Merida and we were told that we didn't need to claim our luggage unless it was requested by customs. It wasn't, so we just carried on to get our connecting flight. So leaving the baggage claim area, there was another line. I guess calling it a line would be rather loose uh, in its definition. There was a moving mob towards the exit. And there was officials standing there. I would look at everybody's ID and decide whether their bags needed to be checked or not. We just showed him our closed Canadian passports and he just waved us through. Now just before exiting the secure area of the terminal, there was a, an escalator that went back up into the secure area area to the departures area uh, and we just had to show our tickets to the agents that were standing at the bottom of the stairs and they cleared us through up the escalator uh, so we didn't need to leave the secure area. However, immediately arriving at the top of the stairs, we went right back through a security checkpoint as if we had left the secure area. We don't really understand why because we'd never left it but back through security we went and security in Mexico probably at least as stringent as you would find in Canada or the United States. 
and in some cases even more so. Now the waiting area was rather small. It's quite a few people crammed in there and the agent was trying to at the top that was just directing us uh, where to stand to go through which line to go through was trying to explain to us of course in Spanish and our Spanish is still pretty limited although we're working on that uh, where to stand and he got this huge smile on his face when we couldn't understand uh, and he turned around grabbed my wife's hands to put on his hips and then he pretended like he was sort of dancing over to the stand at this spotted line like saying hey come follow me and then he had a really good laugh and I followed him and he was kind of winding the line back and forth so he could fit more people in that area obviously enjoying his job <laughs> Not everything is cheaper in Mexico. Our first lesson on paying attention to the cost of things came when we stopped for a bite to eat. We chose a small attractive sports bar and ordered a few tacos, fries, and a spicy cheese dip, and a couple of drinks. The bill was over a hundred bucks, and that wasn't even a full meal. I think they saw us coming. Mexico City Airport, or officially Aeropuerto Internacional Bonito Juarez, is a massive and amazingly busy airport. This airport is a major international hub connecting North America, Central America with the world. And this city center airport handles almost 600 flight operations per day. The sheer volume of people coming and going is mind blowing. And there are some plans afoot to refit a nearby Air Force base into a twin airport to relieve some of the traffic pressure, but who knows how soon. If you have the chance, come experience the hustle and bustle of this place as you go on your adventure. Mexico City sits at over 7,000 feet above sea level, and this means that when landing it feels like you are just rocketing onto the runway, and when taking off it feels like you're going on and on and on as the takeoff roll. This elevation is surprisingly long. <laughs> the flight time from Mexico City to Merida, Yucatan is just about two hours. Our flight arrived in Merida at 9 p.m., allowing us a spectacular view of all of the color, the setting sun emitted as we glided over the Gulf of Mexico. Beautiful. Interestingly, on this flight, the internet was open and active the entire flight. It was fast. I ended up spending most of the flight watching YouTube videos about our destination city of Merida. As we began to descend towards Merida, we could see the lights for a long way off. The Yucatan Peninsula is flat as a pancake. This was a welcoming and pretty sight. Welcome to Merida! The Merida International Airport is a smaller airport, but it's bright and clean and inviting, and there are a few nice places to get a small meal before a flight. It's 9.30 at night, outside it's hot, but the air is humid, tropical, and delicious. Like at many airports around the world, Uber is not able to pick you up right at the airport terminal in Merida, only airport taxis. Our son showed us where to walk to pick up an Uber. It's about a 9 minute or 700 meter walk, as you can see here, on the food and a Google map. So we arrived at our son's home, dropped our luggage, and walked a few blocks for a late night snack. Taqueria Miche ended up being a favorite spot for a torta sandwich. We should have shared one. These are huge, tasty, and only about $4 Canadian, less than $3 US. Join us for future videos as we introduce you to Merida and other towns and cities in Mexico uh, and the process of finishing our immigration process to obtain Mexican residency.